usage of types of files so what are the types of files how can i use those files that will be the next more topic in c++ we have three streams what are the three streams that i have i have input stream output stream along with a error stream whatever the content which is present in that memory must be moved back again to the c++ program if it is if stream that is input file stream if it is of stream that is output file stream so hello everybody a warm welcome to one and all to the chapter called data file handling that is your 12th chapter in your second pucs computer science myself rohini ts lecturer in computer science vidyashram pre university college mysuru So let me get into this today's session that is data file handling then what will be the blueprint of this uh, chapter so from this chapter totally you are going to get 5 marks so you are going to get 5 marks then 2 mark one question will be there that is question number 15 in your question paper so after that you are going to get one 3 mark question that is question number 23 in your question paper so totally you are going to get 2 marks one question and then three marks one question that is two questions will be there from this chapter along with you are going to get five marks then what are the objectives of this chapter what are all the things that we are going to learn this uh, chapter now will let me see here we are going to understand the concept of files so what do you mean by files how it will be used and all that and all i am going to discuss after that usage of types of files so what are the types of files how can i use those files that will be the next more topic then the role of text and binary file so these are the types of file so text and binary file i am going to discuss regarding what are the roles of those two files then concept of opening and closing of the file if i want to perform some of the operation regarding file then i must open and close that file so regarding that i am going to discuss then we are going to learn about what are the input and output operation in the text file as well as in the binary file so what are the input and output operation that i can perform on the text file as well as the binary file so what will be the last thing that i am going to discuss in this chapter that is i am going to discuss the file pointer and their manipulators file pointer and their manipulators so these are the objectives of this chapter so before getting into this chapter you must understand what you mean by data so then what is file and how it will be handled okay so let me explain that thing so here what do you mean by data so as i told in the previous sessions and all data could be anything so it can be what it can be integer it can be any digits characters or image file any video file audio file i can consider anything as a data so what it must be so it could be anything data can be anything and it is a raw fact that needs to be processed so that i can call that as a information so data sir nothing but what that is a raw fact that needs to be processed in order to take the decision then what is this file ma'am what what do you mean by handling so file is nothing but collection of the related data so file is nothing but what it is a collection of related data then what is this handling i am going to perform some of the operation on these data so that is nothing but what handling so i hope you understood what do you mean by data what is handling and what is file so let me get into the today's session so in this session i am going to discuss something regarding this file after that f stream dot h header file then what are the classes for file stream operation then what are the types of data file so these are the agenda of this today's session i am going to discuss so now we'll see what do you mean by file so as i told earlier data is nothing but what it is a raw fact that needs to be processed so when i have a collection of data or related data together then i can call that as a file so i can call that as a file here you can see that it is a collection of related data stored in a particular area on a disk so can i store anywhere in my disk yes you can so it will going to reach or it will going to have a collection of the related data together so that i can call that as a 
file getting so what is the usage of file that will going to store the data and information permanently whenever i want to access those data and information i can because that will be assigned or that will be stored in a permanent manner so that is the usage of using file getting so here you have to remember one thing so file is nothing but it is a sequence of bits bytes or a records that is nothing but what it will be given by the user so the meaning will be definite meaning will be given by the user so what data can be so data can be anything then file is nothing but collection of that data so collection of that related data so then what that data could be so that means what it is a sequence of bits so what are the bits zeros and ones so byte is nothing but collection of that bits so that is regarding bytes or that file may contain lines of data and information or it can be a record so or it can be a record so what i can call a file so file is nothing but what it is a stream of bits bytes and lines or a records so here hierarchy is high so bits is nothing but what zeros and ones so collection of those bits are nothing but bytes so collection of that bytes are lines so collection of lines are together i can call that as a record so file is nothing but what it is a collection of related record in order to store the data and information permanently that is nothing but what file okay so here we have some streams in c++ if i want to execute or if i want to work with file then there must be three streams so what are the streams that i have so here first you have to understand what do you mean by stream so stream is nothing but what you can see here it is a sequence of bytes so it is a sequence of bytes that is a flow of data so stream is nothing but flow of data so why this flow of data is important because if i want to interact or if i want to communicate as a input and output then i require this stream so it is a collection of what bytes so the byte consists of what bits so that is zeros and ones so it will going to have a related data together so what i can call for a stream so it is nothing but what it is a sequence of bytes so what we can call for that stream it is a sequence of byte that is nothing but what flow of data how the data is flowing from one part to another part that will matter a lot so let's get into that one so here you have to consider in c++ we have three streams what are the three streams that i have i have input stream output stream along with a error stream so input stream and output stream along with a error stream so you all know that how to give the input to the computer system why input is important it will going to connect an external world or external environment to the computer system how can i give the input so with the help of some input devices am i right so i am going to take the input from the input units or input devices so that with the help of that data and information i can manipulate or i can process then i can get the information so that is nothing but what input so you yeah, just imagine so which is the keyword that you are going to use in c++ in order to give the input c in then how to use the output and what do you mean by output so when i'm done with the execution of a program or when i'm done with the processing of the data then that must be displayed on the screen right so for that i am going to use see out statement i am going to use see out statement so it will going to take the stream of bytes it will going to take stream of bytes so that is nothing but what sequence of byte that is stream so if you see here i have three types of streams what are the three types of stream that i have so here we just mainly focuses on the two stream input as well as the output so this c++ mainly has three types of stream input output and error stream okay so error stream is also comes under the output stream so let me get into that one so what do you mean by input stream here you just recall what do you mean by input and how the input will be given to the computer system so regarding that i can say that the stream that supplies the data to the program so what i am doing 
I am giving the data to the program. So why the program need to be take the input from the input device in order to manipulate or in order to process. So that is nothing but what input stream. So if the flow of data is from the input devices to the program, then I can call that as a input stream. Getting in the same way, it will be in the reverse manner when it comes to the output stream. So what is that? So the stream that receives the data from the program. So what I'm doing here, I'm going to receive the data from the program. Then program will be the provider here. So where I'm going to display that data? In the output screen, in the output screen. So that I can call that as a output stream. Getting? So input stream is nothing but what? I am going to receive the input from the input devices to the program. So here program is acts as a midpoint. So you have to remember that. So C++ program, that is a program is nothing but what? Sequence of lines of instruction that will going to perform an operation. Getting? So when I am going to take the input from the input devices and I am going to uh, send the data from the input unit to the C++ program. So where the data is flowing now? So it will be from input unit to program. So I can call that as a input stream. Then what do you mean by output stream then? So output stream in a sense, I am going to fetch the data which is present in that C++ program and the data will be moved from program to output unit or to the output devices so that I can call that as a output stream. So if you see here the stream that receives the data from C++ program and that will be used or displayed on the output screen. That is nothing but what? Output stream. Then why we require this error? Can I run a program with errors? It won't allow us. Then at that time what must I do? I must rectify the errors. So if you see here error streams basically an output stream. So why it is output stream? Because the errors will be occurs in the C++ program then that errors will be displayed on the console. So console is nothing but what? Output screen. So when it displayed on the output screen what I am doing? I am fetching the details or I am taking the stream of data from program to output unit. So I can also call this error stream as a output stream. So why I require this error stream in order to display the error messages on the screen. So if the user get to know the errors, so then they help us to rectify that errors. So that errors will also be displayed on the screen. So that we have three types of stream. First you have to understand what you mean by stream and what are the types of stream. Okay, all these are important for two and three mark question. So you have to be very conscious. So this here stream is nothing but it is a sequence of bytes. So that is nothing but what flow of data. So here we have three types of stream, input stream, output stream as well as the error stream. If it is input stream, then the data will be flowed from input unit to the C++ program. If it is output stream, then the data will be moved from uh, C++ program to the console or output. So error streams are mainly used to display the error messages on the screen. So what I'm doing, I'm fetching the details or I'm taking the stream of data from program to output unit so that I can call this error stream which comes under the output stream. So here you can see that. So what are the contents that I have in the screen? Here I have input unit. So input unit may comprises of input devices. So here I have taken keyboard. So keyboard as a input unit. So just imagine. So if I have a keyboard in the sense I am going to give some data to the program. So then where the flow of data occurs, so I am taking the data from input, that data will be copied to the C++ program. So the data will be copied or moved to the C++ program. And here you have to remember one thing, if I want to execute any of the file or any data and information, then that must be in the memory. So then that must be in the memory, that is in the primary memory in RAM. Okay, so then only I can execute or I can process that data.
If you see here, I have a keyboard along with a disk. So disk is nothing but what? It is a storage area where I can store data and information, right? So for C++ program, I require data. So that data can be copied from either input unit or from the disk, which is present in the disk, either input unit. It could be anything. So it can be either keyboard, mouse, scanner. The data can be flow from any of the input unit to the C++ program okay so here you can see that here I have a input stream so what is input stream it will going to flow the data that means sequence of bytes will be moved from any of the input devices so or else I can also take the data from network disk or any of the input unit so that will be moved to C++ program that will be moved to C++ program so what will going to happen in the C++ place program it will going to execute so what it will going to do it will going to execute or it will going to process that data so once the data is processed at that time whatever the content is there in the C++ program that will be copied or that will be moved or streamed to the output unit so here you can consider output unit any output unit so it could be monitor printer speaker any of the thing okay so you can consider any of the output devices so from where the data is moving from uh, program to output unit then i can call that as a output stream i can call that as a output stream if you see here once i'm done with the c++ program executions so it will going to perform some of the operation by taking the input which is given by the input unit so once it is error free, so once it is error free, then the data will be moved to output stream. So output unit may going to display the content which is came from the C++ program. So what if my program or data and instruction contains the errors? So where it has to be displayed? So it must be displayed on the output screen right it must be displayed on the output screen let's imagine here i have a output but i got the error so i got the error so at the time what must happen again whatever the content which is present in that memory must be moved back again to the c++ program so at that time this program will going to rectify that again and then if it is error free then the data which is error free that data and information will be copied to the output unit so how the data are flowing here i'm going to take the input from input device that will be copied to the c++ program i can call this as a input stream so when the data or when the information or a flow of information and data which takes place from c++ program to output unit then i can call that as a output stream so and this error stream is nothing but it is also comes under the output stream it will going to display the error messages so that with the help of that error messages i can rectify the errors and i can have a error free program let me move on to the next topic that is fstream.h header file so why header files are required if I am doing any input and output operation, then I require IO stream.h, right? There you can see the stream word. So you got to know that what you mean by stream. So I represent input stream and O represent output stream. So but what I want to perform, what if I want to perform input and output operation, which is related to the file. At that time, C++ will going to have one header file that is fstream.h, that is file stream. Dot h. It comprises of both input and output operations or it will comprises of both input and output stream which I am going to apply on the files. So that purpose I require this fstream.h header file. So we will see now what is this fstream.h. So it will going to include if stream and of stream as well as the f stream. So f stream is nothing but what? It is a collection of input and output stream. If it is if stream that is input file stream. If it is of stream that is output file stream. So if it is a combination then I can call that as a f stream that is file stream. So if I want to perform all these input output operation on the file then I require this f stream.h header file getting so for that purpose i require this fstream.h header file so when you are working with a file concept that two 
take input stream and output stream in your file, then you must include the header file called fstream.h. So now let me see how it will going to work. So you all know that how the streams will going to work. So as I told, if you want to execute any data and information, then that must be in the disk, that must be in the main memory, that to in RAM, right? So if the data and information is in the RAM, then I can execute, then I can execute again, recall what are the streams that I have discussed, that is F stream and what uh, OF stream and then IF stream, that is nothing but what input stream and output stream. So that if you look into this picture, what I'm trying to say here, I have a input stream, output stream along with the C++ program and I have a disk file. As I told earlier, if you want to execute any of the data and information, then it must be in the primary memory that is in the RAM. Then only it will going to fetch the data and information which is reside in that memory and that will help us to execute the program. Getting? So what I'm do going to do now, so I have a input stream stream. So what are the possibilities of this input stream? Where the data is flowing or where the data is coming? So I am going to get the data which is resides either in the disk file or from the input devices. I am going to take the data and information which is resides either in the disk file or from the input devices. So input stream will going to have the data. That data will be again copied to this program. So what I'm doing here, I'm giving the content, I'm giving the input to the program. So that is data input to the program. When the C++ program receives that data, it will going to perform the operations. So based on the requirement of user, it will going to perform the operations. Once it is done with its operation, what I'm supposed to do, I'm supposed to display that on the console, that is on the outputs. So then how the data transformation or what must be the flow of bytes of data here? So the data will be going to output. That will be displayed on the output screen with the help of this output stream. So what I'm doing here, I'm going to copy that memory to the file. So I'm going to write the data to the file that will be stored in the memory, that will be stored in the memory. So it will goes like this, okay. I'm going to take the input and C++ program will going to op operate and the data which is error free that will be displayed on the console that is nothing but output. So once it is run with its output, the data again will be stored in the file or that is nothing but what this that will be stored in the memory. So this is how the flow of data will going to happen. Getting? So now let me move on to the next topic that is what are the classes I require for file stream operations. So what are the classes I have in order to perform the file operations. So this topic is also important for two mark and three mark question. They may ask you to write any of the three classes or two classes which are required for the file stream operations. So you already know that what is stream that is flow of information or flow of bytes. So how in order to perform those input and output operations or in order to perform that input and output stream, I require some of the classes. I require some of the classes. You know that classes is nothing but what user defined data type, right? So I require that class. If I include that class in my program, then that will allow me to have the features of that particular class. So now we'll see what are the classes that I have in order to perform the file stream operation. Getting? So here you have to remember one thing. What is the class name and what is its purpose? Why I require this class in my program? So we'll see now here I have several classes along with the meaning. So meaning in the sense, what is its purpose? Why I require this class in my program? When to include this class in my program? So here what is the first thing? FILE that is file buffer. So why what is this buffer? So buffers are nothing but what? Temporary storage when I'm doing or when I'm performing the input and output operation at the time I need to store the data and information temporarily. So for that purpose I require this file buffer class. So these are all the class and each class has a different meaning. So each class will going to 
serve a different purpose that you have to keep it in mind then coming to this file buffer so it set the file buffer to read and write so what it will going to do when i am doing read and write operation on the file at that time this file buffer will going to help me in order to store the data temporarily so that i require this file buffer class so what is the next uh, class that i have that is f stream base so what is this f stream f stream is nothing but collection of input and output stream so f stream base so it will be the base class for the f stream class so you can see here it support the operation which is common to the file stream so what are the operations you just remember as of right now you just uh, think about what do you mean by stream and what are the file stream okay so we have different modes of file and we have different modes of operation and i am going to discuss in the coming session so as of now you just think or just remember so what are the operation which will be done by each class so what is this f stream base it will going to supports an operations which is common to the file stream so which are the common operations that i have i have read and write input and output stream so that will going to support by this f stream base class so what is the next thing that i have so you already know that what class consists of right what class consists of it has data members along with the member functions so how to represent that member function so first i need to take the return type then member function name then if there any arguments are a parameter that i'm supposed to specify right if you see here you can see open member function close member function and all the sum of the member function which is resides in a particular class right when i want to use these member function at the time i must call or i must use these classes okay so as of now just understand what is this class is comprises of and what is the purpose of using this class okay so i hope you all understood with this file buffer when i want to store the data temporarily at the time of its reading and writing of the data and content to the file and from the file at the time i require this file buffer then coming to this f stream base so it will going to supports the basic operation which is common to the file stream which is common to the file stream so coming to the if stream i in the sense what input stream so if in the sense input file stream so you all know that how the input stream will going to happen it will going to give the data from input devices or from disk or from any network data to be copied to the c++ program so now we got to know that if stream is nothing but what it will going to support the input operation so we have input stream along with output stream when i want to perform the input operation at the time my program must contain this if stream class right so what if i want to perform the output stream or output operation on the file at that time it must have or it must include of stream so o represents the output and f represents the file so stream is nothing but what collection of bytes or stream of bytes flowing of data getting so it will going to support the output operation and each class have a different meaning and each class have a unique member function in order to perform the input as well as the output operation so coming to the f stream so what i told earlier f stream is nothing but file stream so how can i use this file stream so it is combination or together the usage of input stream along with the output stream so that f stream is nothing but what it simultaneously support both input and output stream so for that purpose i require so in order to perform the input and output stream in my program at the time i require this f stream class if i want to perform only input operation at the time my program must contain this if stream but if i want to perform or if i want to restrict myself to the output operation at the time it must be a of stream so but what if i want to have both input stream and output stream and that means input and output operation both together in my program then i must go with f stream base so for this f stream base this f stream base class is a base class for this f stream class okay so you already know the concept of inheritance base class and derived class and all just recall and remember that thing okay so these are the classes that will be going to help in order to 
perform the file stream operations. So what are the classes that I have? That is file buffer, fstream base, ifstream, ofstream and then fstream. Okay. I hope you all understood with this concept that is classes for file stream operation. So till now we have learnt about what is stream and what is the classes that helps to perform the file stream operation. Okay. So now we'll see what are the types of files that I have. So these types of files are based on how it is stored and how it is received or how it will be fetched, how the data will be fetched. So based on that context, I'm going to divide this data file into two types that is text file and binary file and this is also important question. So you may also expect this question for your examination. What are mentioned the types of files or what are the difference between the text file as well as the binary file. Okay. So based on how it will be stored and how it will be retrieved on that basis I am going to divide the file into two types that is text file and binary file. So let me get into the first type that is text file. So what file consists of it is nothing but what it is collection of streams of data bytes bits lines or anything. So it will going to store the data permanently. So in this text file what I have, so this file will going to store the information in ASCII characters. So how the data will be stored in data file, how the data will be stored in the text file in the ASCII character. You know that each ASCII character has unique number that is unique value. So first you must understand one thing computer understands only zeros and ones. So what I'm speaking can computer understand? No right. So if I'm speaking English in the sense that must be converted to machine level understandable form then only computer fetch the data and it can perform some of the operation. After that it will going to display the output. But so in by making use of this text file I am going to store the data in a ASCII character. So and each ASCII character has its own value value. So it has meaning to the compiler. So how the information will be going to store in the text file each data will be stored in the ASCII character. So that is the first point that you have to remember. Then each line of text is terminated by a special character. So how to find end of a line? I am going to use the backslash n. So that is nothing but what? Delimiters or a escape sequence. So that with the help of this one I can get to know that it is the end of a line or it is the end of a file right. So for that uh, when I am using this text file at the time the each line must be terminated by this delimiters or it must be terminated by a special character. So that is nothing but backslash n. Then how to end the line in a C++ program that is ENDL that is nothing but what end of the line. So for this uh, with the help of this I can get to know that this is the end of a line. So when I'm working with this text file each line of a data. So file is nothing but what collection of streams of data it can be record or it can be line of codes right. So when I want to specify the particular line or when I want to end a line that must be ends with a special character that represents what EOL or delimiters. So I can take backslash n and end l as a delimiters. So it will going to help me out it is the end of a line on this file. So I can move to the next line and I can fetch the details of that file. Then you have to think one thing when I'm using this uh, text file at the time translation is required. So as I told earlier computer understands only zeros and ones. So can it going to understand ASCII characters? Each ASCII character has its own value. So that value will be what converted to machine understandable form that is to the binary form. So that is zeros and once. So this is regarding text file. You have to remember only two points regarding this text file. So what is the next type of file that I have? That is binary file. As the name indicates binary in the sense what? It is a collection or it is nothing but zeros and ones. Whatever the content is there everything will be in the zeros and ones. So but what is the disadvantage of this binary file? Let me explain. So coming to this binary file. So this file will going to contains the information in the same format as it has held in the memory. 
So how the data of this binary file will going to store? It will going to be stored in the memory as it is. Uh, that is nothing but what? In the form of zeros and ones. So can we understand zeros and ones? So if I say 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, can you understand what I'm saying? No. So there is no meaning for me. But the computer will going to understand that data. So that computer understands only binary data. So coming to this ASCII, that means text file, whatever the content is there in the ASCII keyword or ASCII uh, letters, characters that must be translated to the binary form. Then only computer will going to understand. But that is not the thing in the binary file because the information will be in the zeros and ones here. Okay. So no need to convert. So here what you have to remember, it will going to store the information as same format as it is held in the memory. So in memory, if I have high level language or if I have any of the files and data, that will be converted to zeros and ones then that data will be stored in the memory. But when I'm using this binary file, already it will be in the zeros and ones, right? Then in binary file, no delimiters are used for a end of a line. No need to use this. Any delimiters or a end of the line specifier, okay? So that is the next thing. And what we have here, no translation occur here. Why I don't want to translate anything? Already computers knows only zeros and ones. So can I what retranslate that into zeros and ones? That is not required. So that no translation is required or no translations occurs in the binary file. And now you have to understand only two points. So regarding text file as well as the binary file. So in text file, every data and information will be stored in the ASCII character. But in uh, what binary file, the data and information will be stored in the binary form that is zeros and ones. There we have to use the delimiters in order to find the end of a line or we have to use the escape sequence or a special character in order to terminate each line. But that is not in the case of binary file. No delimiters are required. There we require the translation from the ASCII character to the binary. But in binary file, we are going to use the binary data that is zeros and ones so that no translation is required. So let me brief for today's session. In this session, I have discussed some of the important introduction part regarding file. What you mean by file? After that, I had a discussion regarding streams in the file that is input, output and error streams. Then you can see the flow diagram of the input and output along with the error stream. After that, I had a discussion regarding fstream.h header file. Then we have that flow diagram in order to uh, remember or in order to depict the usage and flow of that fstream.h contents. Then I have some classes in order to work with this file stream operation. So after this, I had a discussion regarding classes for file stream operation. Then we had a discussion regarding the types of data files that is text files as well as the binary file. And in each type of data file, you have to remember two points. So it's all about today's session. I'm going to meet you in the next session with next topic of this file handling chapter. Until that, keep learning, keep on growing. Thank you very much.